you expect a little, you're going to get a little. But if you expect great, you're going to get great. Somebody expected something, you're going to get great.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Christians and friends, Hope Covenant Kingdom Ministries, Bible Study, streaming live via Facebook, is now in session. We come to you each and every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. On this evening, due to the Independence Day holiday, we come to you this Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. This is Lesson 36, our subject for tonight, Walk Worthy of Your Calling. We are a production and a ministry of hope, covenant, Kingdom Ministry, Chicago, Illinois, Bronzeville. If you are enjoying this hour, won't you let us know by phoning us at area code 773-924-2790. I am your host, Pastor Michael Body. Our evening scripture is the hundred number of the Psalms. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter to his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. The word of God.
You are tuned to Hope Covenant Kingdom Ministries Bible Study, streaming live via Facebook on another uh, Thursday instead of Tuesday in the p.m. with this young servant, Pastor Michael Body. Thanks be unto God that giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For great is he that is in me than he that's in the world. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. We praise God from whom all blessings flow. God is in the blessing business for he is blessing us right now. We have nothing new to tell you tonight. The same thing we tell you each and every week. It makes no difference what you think of me. But it makes a lot of difference what I think of you. And if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. For the God I serve, he's able to do anything but fail. Might I encourage you by saying to you, look to the hills from which come at your help. All your help come from the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Amen. We thank you for allowing us to come into your homes, uh, your place of business, your hospital room, your place of confinement, on your jobs, uh, wherever you were kind enough to tune us in at this 7 o'clock hour. We always say it's nice to be nice. And if you want to have friends, you must first show yourself friendly. I want to take this time to thank each and every uh, one of you, uh, Dr. Arthur uh, Felton uh, Sr., and also Dr. James Henry Taylor, and Elder Don Cannon, Minister Louise Pillars Davis, and all of you who have taken out time for your busy uh, from your busy schedule to share with us on tonight. Amen. And I thank you for adjusting your schedules. We come to you each and every Tuesday night on Facebook. On Facebook. Where everybody say stuff is bad. Facebook. But I come to tell you that the word is going forth. Amen. Via social media. Amen. And so, uh, I just thank you all for sharing with us. We're going to get into our lesson for tonight. Uh, we just want to encourage your spirits, and we teach kingdom lessons, uh, things that we think are prevalent to uh, minister to the needs of our brothers and sisters in the church of today. Amen. Also, before we further go, uh, I would like to ask if you would, brothers and sisters, take just a moment to share this hour on your Facebook timeline, amen, that we can reach the masses, amen. And also, I ask, would like you to subscribe to us on YouTube. Subscribe to Pastor Michael Body on YouTube, amen. If you want to catch these lessons, you didn't catch last week's lesson on the week before or you like to get a recap you can do so by going to youtube and in the search just put pastor michael body all right we're getting ready to go directly into our lessons i hope that you have your bibles uh with you uh if you do you can follow along with us and i say this each and every week and oft times i say this i our lessons are somewhat different than you get in your regular Bible study. Uh, a lot of times our lesson reaches and teaches things that we need that are not necessarily taught in your local church, but they are things that will help in kingdom principles of the growing and the upbuilding of your church, your community, and even the nation. And so today, our subject, walk worthy of your calling. Walk worthy of your calling. And that comes from Ephesians, 
the epistle of Ephesians, fourth chapter, first through the third verse. It says there, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. With all lowliness, meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. All right. So from those three verses where we get our subject, walk worthy of your calling. Before I get into the lesson, uh, I just chose three of the words. And I wanted us to look at these words so we could get an idea of exactly what we are talking about on tonight. First word I, I looked up was prisoner. And when I looked up prisoner, I picked up one of the definitions, which says a person who is or feels confined or trapped by a situation or a set of circumstances. Okay, and then the next word, he says, walk in the vocation. Vocation, a divine call or calling to God's service or to the Christian life. Vocation, a divine call to God's service or to the Christian life. A function or station in life which one is called by God. So that's a vocation. And... Last but not least, the word worthy, worthy, having adequate or great merit, character or value, of commendable excellence or merit deserving. All right, so now let's back up. And Paul says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. Here in the pistol, uh, 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 of Ephesians, the letter to the church at Ephesus, Paul, he says that I am a prisoner. So he said, I therefore the prisoner. And we said a prisoner is an individual who is or feels confined or trapped. When we become believers in Christ, we become Christians, we begin we come entrapped. Amen. Even times when we want to shake our head and say, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm quitting. It's something that entraps us. Something that locks us in. And Paul calls this imprisonment. And refers to himself. Amen. He said, the prisoner of the Lord. And he says, I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation. All right. Walk worthy, beloved, of your divine call to God's service. Everybody has a divine call to God's service. And we're going somewhere today. Or to the Christian life. Just your divine call to be a follower of Christ. Or your function or your station in life to which you are called by God. So, so what I'm alluding to the fact that every believer, every Christian, every saint is called. Amen. A lot of people are, they are under the impression and a lot of us pastors and teachers we uh, say that the only call is as a preacher and a, and a pastor, but no. All of us have a calling by God. Now, the call of the ministry is a different call, and the Bible even goes to say he desired a good work when speaking of the bishop. That call and just the call to discipleship, to Christianity, is a different call. 
So he says, Paul says, that ye walk worthy, walk worthy of the vocation which ye are called. Now that bothered me when I read that, uh, 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 Dr. Felton, because uh, all of us are sinners, but we just say by grace. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But here Paul says, walk worthy. Well, having adequate merit, having the merit of Christianity, of uh, the character of Christianity, or being commendable excellence of merit and deserving. Amen. How do I get there? How, how do I get there? We sing the song, I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to be one of his disciples. When you make up your mind that you want to follow Jesus, the scripture says, any man being Christ, he is what? A new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. Let's look at Luke 12, 48. But he that knew not and did, watch this, did commit things worthy of stripes. And I want to stop there. All of us, it make no difference how many bars on your robe, what color clergy shirt you wear, whatever your title is, all of us at one time, another, were worthy of stripes. So it said, he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten, and I like this, say, with a few stripes. For unto whomever much is given, and this is where we're going today. Where much is given, much shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. Where am I going here? A lot of us, we want to be somebody in the church. And, and, and uh, we want the titles, we want the positions, we want to prestige, but we don't want to make sacrifice. And the Bible teaches us to present our bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. So yes, it does cost something to be a follower of Christ. When you decide to follow Jesus, don't think that things are going to immediately get better because see what's going to happen. Some folk that connected themselves to you are, are going to begin to pull away from you and, and the places you used to go, you won't be able to go to those places or not as much. Amen. You see, brothers and sisters, being a Christian is a calling. Being a Christian is a calling, and, and what has brought turmoil into the church is that everybody that gets called, they think that God said preach. They think that God said apostle. They think that God said bishop. They think that God says Mr. This and Miss That, and we get these titles, and we think we... Uh, all that in the bag of chips. But Jesus said, let the greatest among you be the servant. So, yes, for those of you that need to know this, every Christian who is a believer is truly called to the Christian faith by the Almighty God. Paul speaks of the vocation wherewith you are called. First of all, you got to know what you are called to. You got to understand the voice of God. Amen. We got to understand his voice. I seen more preachers, more apostles, more bishops, more leaders than we got followers in the church. Because when we hear the call, 
We hear preach when God might have said reach. We hear pray when God might have said stay. What am I saying here? Yes, God is calling us, the believers, once we accept him, uh, confess with our mouth, believe in our heart, that God has raised Christ Jesus from the dead. The Bible says, thou shalt be saved. That's just part of the process. And that part of the process is when a Christian is called, what is that call? Out of the darkness of sin and into the marvelous light of salvation. And so because we don't really listen, sometimes we don't listen. And so when we hear the voice of God we just hear a little bit because a lot of times be like the songwriter that say your body's here with me but your mind is on the other side of town. Some of y'all know that one. Uh, and so a lot of times when God is speaking to us and he speaks to us uh, in a way that we can hear and receive but because we have uh, a zeal of God but not according to knowledge. And being ignorant of God's righteousness, we have gone about to uh, establish our own righteousness and have not submitted ourselves unto the righteousness of God. And so we just hear whatever. Regardless of what God say, we understand that we were called, but we don't understand the calling that we received. Paul speaks of the vocation, whether with, Ye are called. The word again, vocation, means calling, yes. Your vocation, just like on your job, I spent years, uh, several years working for the post office as a letter carrier, uh, as you all would call a mailman. And at the post office, amen, my vocation was letter carrier, letter carrier. But in the body of Christ, my vocation is minister, preacher, pastor. So the word vocation means your calling. And we have to know our calling because as we hear the voice of God, then we can walk therein. He means God it's what Paul means. God has called you. So we're we making it evident now, uh, Elder Cannon. God has called you. And I'm sure you all have seen all the folks in the collars, all the folks in the different colored shirts. And, and, and we don't want to sit up under no word. We don't want to be submissive. Uh, we don't want to be taught. That's because we know we heard a call, but but... We thought that that call said one thing when it said something else. What does that mean? God has called you. What, what, do, what does it mean that God has called you? It means that Christianity is not something that you were born into. Nobody was born a Christian. It don't make no difference if your father was the pastor or he was the presiding prelate uh, or whatever no one was born into Christianity it, it is not something that you can inherit not even something that you can earn you cannot earn a walk with Jesus amen being a Christian is not something that you apply for. If you can't qualify for it. Uh, uh, to be a Christian, you can't be uh, 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 elevated to a Christian. Amen. You can't be ordained to be a Christian. You can't be consecrated to be a Christian. And, and, and in this day and time of the Millennium Church, we get hung up on consecrations and elevations and installations but the call to be a Christian requires none of those being a Christian is not something 
that requires any of those procedures, traditions, practices, doctrines. No, it is a calling. It is a calling. No one is worthy of being a Christian. Nobody. Nobody. The only reason that anyone is a Christian is because of the call of God. God has called us out of darkness into the marvelous light of salvation. Let's look at Ephesians 6, 11 to 18. In order for us to walk worthy of the vocation, first of all, of a Christian, I'm not even alluding to the position of pastor, the position of minister, the position of church mother, the position of deacon. I'm talking about just being called into the king to do kingdom discipleship work. Ephesians 6 and 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God. You cannot be a fireman. And if it's a fire, you, don't, you are not dressed proper so that you can go into a burning house. So that you could save uh, 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 possibly a dying child or a, a woman, a man. So here Paul says, put on the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. Police officer have to put on the whole armor. There are certain things that a, a, a police officer is required to wear. A, a police officer is going to have a badge. He's going to have handcuffs. He's going to have a gun if he don't have two. And, and if he's not uh, a detective, a plain clothes, he's going to have a uniform. So there we have to understand, even in the body of Christ, that we have to have an order because order is the first law in heaven. And we have to be in unity. And how many know that a uniform signifies unity? And in the church, we don't want uniforms no more. But I'm not going to go into that tonight. So here Paul says, put on the whole arm of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil because it was Paul who said, when I would desire to do good, evil is present. There's no way of getting around it. Uh, the devil is going to be, even when you get to the church house, even when you prayed all night, even when you fast, just as Jesus fast, and the devil followed him, into the wilderness. 12 verse. Says for we wrestle. Not against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers. Of the darkness of this world. And against spiritual wickedness. In high places. So we have to be dressed up. We have to have on the, the, the proper stuff. Wherefore. Take unto you the whole arm of God. That's when you've really been called. When you've been called, you want to dress up right. So you'll be equipped for the assignment and walk worthy of the call that God has called you unto. So he said, take unto you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 14 says what? Stand therefore, having your loins gird about with truth. Christians ought to be gird with truth. Amen. Uh, the Bible says a lie stinks in the nostril of God. And yet, they are, uh, 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 they are liars in the church. Amen. So here Paul says your loins gird about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Of righteousness. 
uh, it's not, it, it, it ought not just be about you. It has to be about holiness. It has to be at, about righteousness. Just as the scripture says, be ye holy as I am holy. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Again, to whom much is given, much is required. 15. And your feet shy with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We have, we have to dress accordingly. And if our spiritual man is not dressed right, that's why a lot of times our physical man in the church is not dressed right. If we come as we are in our spiritual, then we'll come as we are in our natural. And that's nothing so wrong with coming as you are. But what's wrong when you come as you are and you stay as you are, when the Bible said, old things are passed away. Behold all things. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So he says, stand therefore, having your loins girded with truth, the breastplate of righteous, feet shot with the preparation of the gospel. Something ought to identify you if you are called to do the work of the gospel ministry. If that's no more than being on the wall, on the door, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord in the dwelling tents of the wicked. That's a call. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Why? Because the book of Hebrews says, faith, faith without works is dead. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And it also says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So above all, we have to take on the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. If we, when we got faith, uh, we're not so quick to crumble when somebody talk about you, when somebody gossip about you, when folk lie on you, when, when, when folk don't uh, receive you, you'll be able to take something. And I come to tell you tonight, if you can't take it, you can't make it. 17, and take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation and the sword. And we're going to talk about the sword a minute. Of the spirit, which is the word of God, which is the Bible. I know this is 2017. I know this is modern technology. But spiritual warfare and modern technology have allowed us to replace the sword of the spirit, which is our Bible, which is the word of God, with our iPhone, with our Galaxy, with our Kindle, with, with our tablet, with our iPad. And somebody said, he's going all over everywhere. I'm trying to take you somewhere. We have to have the helmet of salvation. We have to have the sword of the spirit. See, the thing about the Bible, Kim, the Bible is just not for you to read because it never said nowhere in the Bible for you to read it nowhere, but it did say study. Study to show thyself, approve a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. And we have to do that. We have to study. And, and you know what's difficult, Kim, to, 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 to study the word of God in your iPad, in, in your iPhone, because I don't mean you got them. And, and a lot of times, even when I go to my Bible app, uh, uh, something will make me decide to check my Facebook page. <laughs> Amen. Or, or, or either I Google something or either I check a text. And it's a trick of the enemy, and I'm not saying nothing is wrong with modern technology, but we got to go back sometime and get some of the old-time religion. 
Go back to the realness, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and the sword of the spirit that ain't on your phone. That's just a temporary fix up the word of God. And then, last but not least, praying always. A Christian, when you've been called, you pray. Part of Christendom, part of Christendom is praying. It says with prayer and supplication in the spirit. Pray, prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. What do that mean? I can't just pray, but I'm not going to pray for Bernard. Uh, I, don't, I don't fool with Bernard. Uh, but it says, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's when you know that God has called you. We're not talking about even called to preach. We're talking about call, the call to do kingdom work. The call as a Christian. The call as a believer. The call as a disciple of Christ. And then we won't be so confused and there won't be more folks in the pulpit than this is in the pews. Amen. If we do not understand that, we would think that we are Christians because we chose Christ. Because we are just a little bit smarter than the next person who did not choose Christ. So since they didn't choose Christ and, and I did choose Christ, uh, uh, hey, I'm, I'm all that in the bag of chips. And that will do what to us? That will lead us to pride. And how many know that pride comes before a fall? And the whole point of the verses that I previously read to you is that those who are called by God to do whatever the work, whatever the gift, if it's the same, and your gift might just be to smile. Your gift might uh, 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 be just to help somebody else. Your gift may be to pray. You may be an intercessor. You may, it might be the preacher. It might be the pastor. Every pastor is, is not the best preacher, and every preacher is not equipped to pastor. So the whole point that I'm making in these verses that those who are called that we will be humble and walk worthy of the calling of God on our lives. The church of God is animated by one spirit. The church of God. And even though we got several spirits in the church it's animated and activated by one spirit which is the Holy Spirit, which distributes gifts. Did y'all hear that? So, to a lot of us that got a calling and we got it misconstrued, that, that, that we really didn't know what our call was, it's because we don't study. The Holy Spirit distributes gifts to the members of the church to build up. And so, God is a wise, all-knowing, all-seeing omnipotent, omniscient. He's everywhere at the same time. Sees all, he knows all. God got better sense than to call 30 folk to do the same thing. I think God got more sense than to call 30 chiefs and one Indian. But in the church, we got more chiefs than Indians because we don't study. So the Holy Spirit distributes the gifts to the members of the church. When I say the church, I'm not speaking of Big Zion, Holy Trinity, uh, Grace Temple, uh, 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 Evening Star. I'm talking about uh, the church of God, which includes every church, every church, which is the entire body of Christ. We have one hope, and that one hope, namely the hope that this life is not all there, is Jesus' resurrection. 
Jesus' resurrection, which serves as both a reminder and a confirmation of that hope. The hope for every Christian, amen, of eternal life, of everlasting life, amen. We have one Lord, which is Jesus Christ, who has set up his kingdom, and guess where his kingdom is? It's in our hearts, in our hearts. That's if we've really been called out of the darkness of sin unto salvation. To belong to the church means to follow to belong to the church means to follow the commands of Jesus Christ with a joyful and willing heart. If you went church and, and it's too much arm locking and head locking and arm twisting, something is wrong with that picture. Because God gives us choice. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, do what? Be steadfast. That's our job. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And that goes for everyone who was called by God to do the work of a believer, the work of a Christian, the work of a disciple. disciple. We need to be steadfast. Even when the storm rises in our church, even when folks lie on you, when they talk about you, when you don't agree with the pastor, when the musician is, is not acting right, when, when, when it's folk that you know don't mean you no good, you got to be unmovable. You got to be abounding in the work of the Lord. We have one faith, which is the free gift of God. Faith is the free gift of God. This faith is not merely an intellectual belief that there's a God who is merciful and just, amen, who showers rewards on his followers. It's more than that. This faith permeates every aspect of our being. It transforms our lives. Members of God's church can testify with the Apostle Paul. The life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We have one baptism, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, which is an outward sign of an inward grace which God has bestowed upon all of us. I'm talking about when we walk worthy of our calling. We have one God and Father. To belong to the church is to be adopted. It don't make no difference what location you go to. It does not matter who your pastor is, who your chief apostle is, who your presiding prelate is. But we have one God, one Father, overall. So for us to belong to the church is to be adopted into God's family. Let's look at Ephesians 4 and 14. That we henceforth, watch this, we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning and craftiness, whereby they lie to wait to deceive. If you are really called by God and you really study his word, you're not so quick to get caught up in every movement in the church. Get excited uh, about being entertained by gospel music. or uh, See, we get... It's nothing wrong with these things, but what we do, we exchange entertainment in the church for worship. There's a difference in worship and entertainment. What am I saying? Now the message that comes from the pulpit is not necessarily of salvation, but it's a message to give you just enough to keep you coming back. We give a, a crack message, just, just enough to get you high enough to get another hit. And that's what 
we're getting the watered down that we don't want to preach about heaven in hell we don't want to preach about gossiping and lying and fornication adultery and homosexuality we don't want to preach about heaven and hell but instead of preaching about those things we don't want to preach about divine order but we'll substitute all of the doctrine of the Bible and we'll sum it up by saying come as you are Jesus did say come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden he said take my yoke upon you and learn of me my yoke is easy my burdens are, are light even though I never found come as you are in the Bible I can respect that God wants us to come he said, compel them to come to my house. But then he goes on that my house might be fair. He said, but teaching them to observe all things. We came as we were. We stayed as we were. But Jesus said, teaching them to observe all things. And lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. What am I saying? When you came to Christ, as you were weary, worn, sad, we need to listen to that song. It's some more than just say I came as I was. It said, I found in him a resting place, and he hath made me glad. And once God makes you glad, he will, God will change you, and old things will become New. Second Corinthians. We only got a little while to go. Y'all stay with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Second Corinthians 6 and 17. Wherefore come out from amongst them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Come out from among them. We're afraid to come out because it's not popular to take a stand for what's right. Is the mega church wrong? No. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. A stranger he will not follow. So if I'm going somewhere, then it don't make me no different. This is 30 folks to 3,000. And, and I hear the word, and it's not the true, unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't take part. Why? 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, Wherefore come out from among them, you weren't meant to be a part of every movement. Over here we saying, if you ain't speaking in tongue, you ain't received the Holy Ghost. Over here we saying, if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, then we got Baptist folks saying, I've been Baptist all my life. I was born a Baptist, and, 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 and I'm going to die a Baptist. I never figured out what a Baptist was. Only Baptist I know about is John the Baptist. I understand the name of your church might say Baptist. Amen. It may say Pentecostal. That's just a, a, a worship, uh, a way of worship. That's your traditional form of worship. That's your worship style, a Baptist worship style, which means Baptist tradition. Church of God in Christ, which means you do traditional, but there's no such a thing as the church of God in Christ. It's just a church. If, the, if you say the name is this, that, another church of God in Christ, that's fine. If you say my name, name of my church is uh, such and such a missionary Baptist church, that's fine. But it's just a church. How can there be so many diversities of churches, but there's only one church? So then you got the folks over here say, well, I don't, we don't fellowship, they're Baptists. These folks say, they're apostolic. We don't, once we become born again, we, we don't divide. There should not be division. Paul said, I hear that when you come together, that there is division, and I believe it. God bless you, Terry. When we become a part called 
when we're talking about walking of the vocation that you were called in, there is no division. If a church is preaching Jesus and him crucified, it don't make me no different what the signs say. I can't go there because they signs say holiness. They signs say seven-day Adventist. Their signs say Sabbath. The pastor says bishop. I can't go there because I don't believe in bishops. I don't, I don't believe in elder. And then you got those folks. The Bible says reverend no man. So everywhere we got a problem with something in every church. So here, 2 Corinthians 6, 6 and 17, uh, Terry says, Come out from among them. Be ye separated, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Then he said, I will receive you. We need to be stop being concerned about the folks in the church making you something. Because when a man thinketh himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. I remember when I was growing up in a church, I used to have so many folk that I wanted to be like until I got some sense and now I just want to be like Jesus. Because that's what a Christian is to be, like Jesus. Walking worthily, we ought to be walking worthily in humility. We, we, we lack that in today's church. We are too puffed up. There's not enough charity, which is love. There's not enough meekness. We, we lack meekness. We, we lack patience with folks. We forgot that folks had to be patient when we first came to the church. They had to be patient with us. We got a problem because somebody don't have on what we think they ought to have on. And so we turn them away. Somebody might not smell right. Or somebody might have alcohol on their breath. If they came to the church, they came to the right place. And because they came to the right place, gives us an opportunity to minister. Now, when Paul said, let us walk worthy of the vocation or calling that with if we were called, we were called to be followers of Christ. And, 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 and to be a follower of Christ means to be Christ-like. Then you need to ask yourself, when these folk come into church, you don't know how to treat them, ask yourself the question, what would Jesus do? Meekness, patience, we need to have patience. And forbearance. What do you mean forbearance? We, we need to be able to forbear other people's burdens. The strong bearing the infirmity of the, the weak. And we will lead to submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. We need to lead people to being submissive to the fear of the Lord. There's not enough fear of the Lord. That's why there's cussing in the church. Smoke. You know, you got folks in the church that shout, and, and five minutes later, they're standing in front of the church, lighting a cigarette or whatever else. And somebody said, well, well, ain't nothing so wrong with the cigarette now. And that's not that. It's a whole lot of stuff that folk can do. But, but, but the problem is that the church is a holy place. We forgot about respect. We forgot about reverence. We forgot about fear of God. So here, again, Paul says, walk worthy in humility, meekness, patience, forbearing one another, and submitting one another to the fear of God. Walking worthy of our vocation refers to the process of sanctification. And we get ready to wrap it up. The process of sanctification. And I'm not talking about a sanctified denominational church or any other denominational church. 
Because how many of you all know that there's no such a thing as denomination in the Bible? We didn't know no better years ago. So even if the name is on the, on the door, it's just the name of the church. That's all nothing to get hung up on. They full gospel. It's an organization. It's not a denomination. That we we connected with Reformation. We 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 got too many things going on that keep us divided. Our vocation is our calling, and we are called to become holy as God is holy. Believers should never stop studying, according to Paul. We should study to show ourselves approved. A workman that need not divide the word of truth. We need to keep the vision alive constantly. We got to keep the vision, our vision, alive. This is our common cause to keep the vision alive and constantly refine it by more and greater understanding of the word of God. Also, we should put it into practice. Put the word of God into practice in your life. We must put the doctrines into practice because salvation consists not only of believing in truth, but also using and applying it so that it becomes written into our own character, our very character. When we do this, we will require faith and setting the will, disciplining ourselves. Y'all get that? Disciplining ourselves to follow the correct path, my God, in what we know to do. I'm talking about when we walking, worthy of our calling. I don't know your calling. Only you know your calling because God whispered your calling in your ear. Amen. When he said, follow me. The fact that the Bible states that Enoch walked with God suggests that there was a relationship that had been established between Enoch and God. The example of Enoch takes us uh, to another place here because he was a faithful person. And in reference to Enoch, we... We, we ought to have a faithful person's movement toward glorification. And a true life of faith, walking with God, follows justification. Justification. If our walk with God is true, then we will move toward glorification. Okay? Walk and walking are the Bible's most frequently used metaphors for two related concepts. They are used almost 300 times to indicate interaction with another and making progress toward a destination. Walk or walking indicates the passage of time as a person continues in a chosen direction of life. What direction are you walking in your life or in your lifestyle? For example, as we close, Psalms 21 said, Blessed is the man who what? Walks. Blessed is the man who walked not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's walking worthy. Walking not in the counsel of the ungodly. Proverbs 4 and 14. Do not enter the path of the wicked. And do not walk in the way of the evil. That's teaching us to walk worthy. Because if we don't walk in the path of the wicked or the evil. Then we are walking worthy of our vocation. Of our calling. Daniel 4 and 37. And those who walk in pride. He is able to abase. When we just get too proud, God will bring us down. For if any man shall exalt himself, he shall be abased. But if any man shall humble himself, he shall be exalted. Amen. 
We got three more verses. Micah 6 and 8. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? Walking worthy, Terry. When you're walking worthy, you need to do justly. You need to treat. We sing the song, I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to treat everybody right. We have to do that. Uh, we have to do justly. We have to love mercy. We have to walk humbly, humbly with our God. Psalms 119.45 says, And I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. Last but not least, our last verse, Amos 3 and 3. Can two walk together except they agree? And that shows that two cannot in the church. We got to understand we cannot walk together if we are not on one accord. Can two walk together except they be agreed? And it shows us that two cannot walk together unless they agree. A person walking with God illustrates that the two are in agreement. And when you are in agreement with God, then things will work out in your life. This does not mean that that person is perfect. Because none of us would be perfect on this side. But what it means, it does imply that God's acceptance, acceptance of us at that stage of our life. That he's satisfied with us. And we need to ask the question in reference to our walk according to the call of God that we walk worthy. Is he satisfied? That's what we need to understand. Ask the question to yourself. Is he satisfied with me? Is he satisfied? Amen. When you go to your church on Sunday, you, 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 you remind yourself of what we talked about on tonight, that I need to walk worthy. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave to I got to walk worthy of the vocation or worthy of the calling. That God have called me into. I thank you all for sharing with us on tonight. Each and every one of you. Sean, thank you. Sean Artist. Amen. Kim Coleman. And Sister Terry. Bernard. I thank all of you, all of the preachers and pastors. By way of announcement on tomorrow, Hope Covenant Kingdom Hour with Prayer Open Forum. Uh, Friday. It's uh, July the 7th at 4 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time with this your humble servant, Pastor Michael Body, as your host. I invite you to dial 724-444-7444 and enter the call ID 125026, followed by the pound sign. Uh, we ask that you mute your phones, or you can join our live and on-demand streaming at www.talkshoe.com dot com forward slash tc forward slash one two five zero two six we are bible believing ministry our discussions and teachings are solely christian faith based and we are a ministry and production of hope covenant kingdom ministry chicago illinois brownsville if you have enjoyed this hour i invite you to uh subscribe to us on youtube at pastor michael body or give us a call on this week at 773-924-2790. Once again, we thank you for tuning in uh, with us. God bless you. We're looking for you at our regular time uh, next week on Tuesday. Looking for you next, next Tuesday uh, to share with us. The table is spread. The feast of the Lord is going on. Let us pray.
Father God, we thank you for this hour that you have allowed us to share together. Oh God, you are omnipotent, you are omniscious, you are omnipresent, you are all seeing, you are all knowing, you are mighty God, you are everlasting God. You're the first, you're the last, you're the beginning, you're the ending, you're the first, you're the last. So we thank you for allowing us to assemble on tonight. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for visiting with us. We thank you for allowing your spirit to rest upon us. Oh God, we thank you for the ones who tuned in that they might be fed the bread of life. Oh God, hold them in the hollow of your hand. Protect, keep them, bless them in a mighty way. Oh God, we need you right now. And we thank you right now. You've been good to us. You brought us through dangerous singing and unseen. You brought us not only a mighty long way, but you brought us all the way. So we lift up holy hands to you. Now look on those who tuned in. Give them a special blessing on tonight. Bless their families. Bless them as they go to and fro. Give them traveling mercy and grace. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for deliverance. We pray healing. We pray that you cover with the blood of Jesus. Oh God, that you would show up in their lives. Whatever they're going through, Father, that you would bring them out. For you told us to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. And because you care, Father, we want to let you know we need you more than we ever needed you before. Now, Lord, keep us, protect us, watch over us. Oh, God, we offer up this prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And in the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs>